Good morning, my name is Marco Zuppone. I'm a Dell case trainer based in Bracknell, UK. I'm uh, Today I'm going to introduce you what is the Inventory API. Uh, Inventory API is a new feature that was introduced in the K1000 uh, version 5.4. With this feature, uh, we, you will be able to send programmatically to the K1000 via HTTP POST an XML file that represents an inventory of your machine. You may wonder why you want to do something like that due to the fact that if you have installed the K1000 agent on your computer, you will be uh, able to send the inventory without any special program to write. But this feature can become very uh, very useful when uh, you need to send to the K1000 an inventory of a machine where you cannot install the K1000 a agent because maybe the operating system is not on the supported list or maybe it is on the supported list but you are not uh, able to install the agent there uh, to comply to some particular security company policy but you still want to um, you still want uh, to have a track of this uh, computer uh, on this device so you you can write your own uh, script to create the XML file that represents the, the inventory and then upload it to the K1000 using the um, a, uh, inventory API that is called WS API API. Um, before to do that, you need to enable this feature in the K1000 because this feature is normally not enabled. So let's see how you need what you need to do to enable this feature. Let's go to the K1000 administration interface. You need to go to the setting menu and then to the security settings edit the security setting and enable inventory api access you need to use a password this password is important because uh, you will need this password um, you will need to send this password in a particular way uh, to the K1000 web, uh, serv um, web service to be able to authenticate and uh, we select the password and then we need to save press the set security options this will reboot your appliance We need to wait that the appliance comes back. Okay, let's see if he's back. Okay, let's go to security setting. Now the option enable inventory API is active. What we need to do now is to have ready an XML file that represents an inventory of a machine like this example one. You can find the format described in the help file. Go to the help file, search for this article and here uh, you can find here an example in Perl. I wrote an example in, in PowerShell that you can download from the link that is appearing now on your screen. But you can use this example in Perl as well. The, f the point of the example is that you need uh, uh, to post, the um, to do an HTTP post to send this HTML file at uh, this XML file to the K1000 and the format is described here uh, but there is a faster way if you want to get a blueprint of it a template of it and then uh, mo mo modify it if you have a machine with a K1000 agent installed like this one you can simply 
go to the command prompt, go to program files, del case, and launch the K inventory with the parameter machine minus out my new inventory dot xml it is important to use the minus machine if you use only the minus out it will still generate a file but this file cannot be submitted using the inventory api okay So this uh, represents the inventory of, of my machine. You can play with it, you can change it and try to submit to the uh, K1000 using or the Perl script or the PowerShell program that uh, I wrote, the PowerShell script that I wrote. A very important no not notice is that here you see there is this field, it's called a Mac. This is not the Mac address of the machine. This need to be the uh, GUID, the GUID of the machine, the uh, case GUID, what we call it KUID. Um, you, if you don't know how to create, uh, a, if you don't have a facility to create a QID that in the end is a normal GUID, you can use the K1000 uh, WS API to uh, generate it. It will help you to generate a, a case user ID. Uh, you are not. Uh, it's not mandatory that after you ask to the um, to the inventory API to generate for you a case user ID. It's not mandatory that you are going to use that. But we provide that only like a facility. Uh, if on the platform where are you going to. Uh, create uh, your XML file, you do not have the facility to create uh, uh, GUID locally, you can use the inventory API uh, to generate one, but then if you want you can use another one. It, it is important they are randomic, because if you use always the same uh, case you use a read for more than one machine, you are going to have troubles. Okay, so we can uh, use this one, or we can use the other one that I that I prepared on on my screen. We will see how to use uh, the script that I wrote to to post it. We, we need to open PowerShell. Here we have the the one that represents an inventory of uh, a ASX machine. show you that it's working fine. I'm going to delete this machine from here. Okay. And now we're going to use the PowerShell example. If you launch it without any parameter, it will tell you how to use it it will require three mandatory parameters. The first one is the name of the file, file to send. The second one is the IP address of the host name of the K1000. And the third one is the password. The password is the password that you set before in the in, uh, in the setting section. Okay, 
this has been sent correctly. Let's see. Here we are. The script that I wrote is only given like an example, but you can find, uh, you can edit it for sure. You you may have a look at uh, how it was written. Uh, some part of it are a bit uh, complex, but the main uh, idea is that uh, um, you needed to do an HTTP post and you need to um, to think about if you want to rewrite it in another language the very important thing is that you keep track of the cookies because if you use a normal uh, you use um, to invoke this uh, this bizapi uh, ws api uh, something like a normal browser the browser is used to maintain the cookies but if you are using a scripting language or uh, a C sharp or everything else uh, if you don't specify to keep the cookies to save the cookies somewhere in the session uh, this is this is not a browser so uh, you need to preserve the cookies somewhere and when you have the second uh, call to the WS API, you need to send back the, the cookie that gave you the, the first time. That's what is uh, really the, um, the secret to write a good script that works fine with the WS API. You will find the script to the link uh, that appears uh, on uh, now on this video. Um, remember a very important thing about uh, if you are not uh, proficient in um, PowerShell, uh, the first time, if you never configured the security policy in PowerShell, the first time you are going to execute a script, not only this script, but every kind of script, you will get an error. Uh, this is because you need to authorize the execution of the PowerShell script on your computer. Um, the command to do this is uh, execution policy is set execution policy and if you do the get help you will find more information about it If you do not set the set execution policy uh, to um, unrestricted, you will not be able to execute a script if the script is not signed. If you do not want to set the execution policy to unrestricted, this can be even done manually with the set execution policy command or it can be done uh, through a GPO, you will need to sign your script. Uh, if you want to know how to sign a script, there are many articles on the web. Um, you can access if you want this one that is appearing here on on the video. And that's um, the command is uh, set execution policy. Unrestricted. then you need to say yes. Thank you very much for following my session. I hope you found it useful. You can find informa more information about this feature and other feature participating to our KKE sessions on, and on IT Ninja as well. Thank you, bye.